friends in this series we are deploying machine learning models to various services from gcp aws and azure in a previous video we deployed a model using fast api on our local server today we still deploy to a local server but using docker containers okay So, a very quick recap. We have trained a very simple ML model using this train.py Python script. We save the model as model.joblib. And then we have created our local server using FastAPI and Pydantic, right? And then we have deployed uh, uh, this app to our local server. We'll use the same two files, but we deploy using to a Docker container. So for that, we need a Docker file, right? Now, just if you are going to use Docker, I assume you already have some basics uh, of a Docker, but very, very 30 seconds or one minute recap, okay? So this is how it looks like. And we have our infrastructure. Let's say this is my laptop, okay? That's the hardware. And then the host operating system, which is this Mac OS, right? On my laptop, I have installed this Docker engine, okay? And once we have this Docker engine, we can create these Docker containers. Now, each container can have its own operating system, okay? For example, this one, it can have Ubuntu, this can have, uh, let's say, Fedora, uh, CentOS, or uh, whatever uh, your requirement is. So each container will have one, its own operating system, two, its own frameworks or different versions of the framework. For example, I might need Python 3.7 for this application, whereas I might need Python 3.12, um, the latest uh, for this application, right? On top of it, we will have our application code. Okay, so within this container, we will have three things. Only two are shown here, but we will have the base operating system, the libraries or the runtime, and our package code. Okay, so we combine these three together to make it a Docker. Okay, so this way, on a single infrastructure, with a host operating system, we can run applications which require different operating systems as well as different frameworks with different versions. Okay, and all since all these are isolated, uh, they can run independently from one another. Okay, all right. So let's create the Docker file first. Okay, to create a Docker container or the Docker, uh, we need this Docker file. Okay, so first we need our base uh, uh, sorry, operating system, right? So here we are saying this uh, Python uh, 3.8 Slim Buster. Uh, so it's the very lightweight uh, Ubuntu OS, which has this Python 3.8 pre-installed. And then we set a working directory where we are going to have all our files and from where we are going to run all our code. So we have created a folder called app, right? And then what do we need to uh, run this container? First, we want to train the model and then deploy the model. To train the model, uh, we, need, uh, we need the train file. We need the deploy file. We copy them to the uh, package, uh, uh, our folder. but to run this code, we need to install a bunch of Python libraries, which are in this requirements file. So if I go requirement, so we need joblib for saving and loading the model, Pydantic, uh, that's for uh, the data types, and then scikit-learn for the model training, uh, fast API in UVCon, that's for the server and the standard NumPy, okay? So, these are the th three files we need, and then, we install the libraries we need and first we run the train file. This will create the model.joblib file 
and here we are exposing the port IT. So from the Docker, so within each container, we'll have all the ports uh, there, right? But we need to export them. For example, if app, this is our container. So for this container, we are exposing port 8080. But we wouldn't be able to access that from our host system directly. We need to connect or pair these two together, okay? So that's what we are doing here. So we deploy the app using this uvcon command and our file name is deploy and our app name is app. This can be anything, but this deploy, it has to match with uh, our uh, deploy file and app has to match with uh, uh, this app, okay? And then uh, the host, uh, uh, okay. Now the important thing is, now all these, all these run commands, these are run when the Docker is created the first time. But after that, only this command uh, is live. For example, this, this is the one which is uh, running the server, okay? Now, if we already have a pre-trained or a trained model, which we want to deploy, then we won't be running this code, right? We won't be creating this model. So I can comment this out. And if I have the model file in the same folder in my local system, I can copy this file also to my app folder. Okay. So my deploy file, it will pick up what we have in the app folder which is the copied version of this local file and deploy that version of the file, okay? So depending on use cases, uh, there are two scenarios, right? One, we do not have a trained model. So in such a scenario, we might want to train the model also while creating the Docker and then deploy that model. Or else we might already have a pre-trained uh, or a trained model from a data scientist, let's say in our storage bucket or somewhere. So we can copy that file and we can copy the file to the uh, Docker image so that uh, we can deploy uh, uh, the model trained by someone else also, okay? But in this case, we are going to uh, uh, train the model on the fly, all right? Uh, just quick recap, uh, because it took me a while uh, to get my head around it uh, when I first learned about Docker. So as I mentioned here, here we have our infrastructure, which is my laptop, and then the host operating system, which is Mac. On top of it, I have installed Docker, and then we have these independent containers. So within each container also, we have three things, the operating system, the runtime or the libraries, and our application code. So here, uh, this is the operating system, which is this Ubuntu, and then the runtime are the frameworks, which is this Python. So we already have two things uh, with just uh, this uh, one uh, command, right? The base operating system and also uh, the framework. But the framework might not be sufficient. We might want to install additional libraries, which is what we are doing using this requirement file, okay? So we have two things already. And then our application code, which is this train.py and deploy.py. And finally, we are using this deploy.app. I hope those concepts are clear because it took me a while uh, to get my head around uh, 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 these concepts. All right. So once we have it, we just need to create the Docker image and then run that as a container. All right. So let me go here. So here I have a file commands. So where uh, I have, I have all the useful Docker commands. So the first one is, let's check uh, if we already have any uh, images already. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let me clear this up. Okay. So Docker image ls. So this will show me uh, all the previous uh, uh, images which are created. So I have my ML app, uh, the version one uh, in version two. Okay. Now docker ps, this will show me if I have any containers running. So as you can see, this is container, okay? I have no containers running. First, let's create the docker, okay? So docker build. Now, since we have myml app, let's call it myml serve. 
you can give uh, any, any version you want, V1, whatever it is. So let's do this. Now what is happening is the base Ubuntu version is being downloaded with Python 3.8 pre-installed, right? So currently this part of the command is being run. Uh, this will take some uh, while. Uh, uh, it can be as large as again several gigabytes, but this is a slim version. It will be only about 150 MB, right? Once that is done, this copying of files is done it create the directory and copy the file to that directory and then these required uh, the libraries are installed okay so which is what is being done uh, at this point i mean uh, okay and then finally uh, sorry we are training the file uh, uh, train.py so we are running this python file which uh, uh, can again take quite some time in this case it takes only a couple of seconds because uh, our training uh, all it, it has just 150 records with just four features so training this model hardly takes a second but if you have uh, again some object detection or image classification model this might itself take uh, an hour okay so this might take an hour if we are also creating the model uh, at the time of docker creation but if we are simply using a model which is trained elsewhere then it's just a copy okay and finally uh, it deploy uh, and this command is run when uh, this command is run when we actually deploy the container okay uh, only once uh, sorry uh, at the time of uh, uh, running all right so we have created our container now let's uh, let's run the container all right file oh, where is my commands yeah uh, now one thing if you are creating your docker image on uh, an host operating system which is different from the operating system uh, where you are going to deploy for example in this case i have mac and i have created the docker on mac but if i want to run the container on a linux host operating system i will run into errors uh, uh, because when we create the docker there is some dependency on what host operating system is used to create uh, that image so either we use the same host operating system to create image and also to deploy or when we create the image we have some options so instead of this simple command we can create this command we can use this command to create the image so that it can run on this operating system also so basically the host operating system for creating the docker and running the docker uh, can also be different if we use a command like this where we provide uh, uh, the host uh, and target operating systems whereas if we are creating and running on the same os uh, we can uh, uh, we don't have to worry about that okay so that's also another uh, important consideration right and finally let's run our docker so if you remember from our docker we are we are exposing port 8080 right now as i mentioned we need to map this port to one of the port on our host operating system so that using that port we can access the container Okay, so we are mapping to the same one. So let's do this. Hmm. It should not have run. Uh, but our app is this Saru, right? Our app is serve. My 880 is already busy, so I should have gotten an error. Yes, I got an error saying this 8080 is already uh, busy on my local system because I'm already running an application there. So what I can do is I can either deploy to a different port or connect a different port or I'll free up my port 880 on my local system. So I free up. All right, now 
they should run cannot connect to the darker demon is the darker demon running it is running i'm pretty sure let me see darker image ls something not right let me take this command my ml serve so i want to deploy this one it should work this time hopefully it is running so now i can go to zero yeah uh, i have already covered uh, uh, various aspects of this uh, ui in previous video so please have a look we focus on the darker side of things uh, in this video Okay, now, but how do we make sure, I mean, because as I said, I'm running a local version as, uh, also, right? So how do we make sure that uh, it's actually serving from the Docker and things like that? So let's look into a few more Docker commands, which are super useful. So now if I run Docker PS, I should be seeing a container. So I have a container running. Now I can go inside the container. So here you will see the Docker port 880 is mapped to my local port 880, okay? Now, what I would like to do is, I would like to see if the model is actually created, right? Uh, we have not copied the model from our local to the Docker image. We created it using uh, the train file. Now, what I will do is, I'll go inside the Docker. So this is the command. Oh, sorry. I'll need to provide this Docker container ID, which is this. As you can see, now I am inside my Docker. The folder is app, which is what we created in the Docker file. If I look like this, so here we have this model.joblib file. 